Okay, I'm Harold. I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, and Syra is, uh, she works in humanitarian aid, and Joey is a uh, marine biologist. Um, fishing, glass fishing is fishing with explosives. So this picture is from Wikipedia. Basically, you blast the uh, fish and um, you kill them and you scoop them up. It's illegal everywhere that it's practiced um, because it's very destructive. It's indiscriminate in the, in the, in the critters that it kills. Um, and um, it's uh, bad news ecologically uh, regardless. Okay, um, I'm going to talk about a sea trial that um, we uh, ran last year. And um, the sea trial was basically for these boys that you see on the left here consisting of a white um, PVC pipe with some pipe fittings containing uh, recording equipment and the hydrophone which you see dangling off the back paper there. And we engaged a local uh, local fisherman to take us around and uh, deploy and recover these boys. So the next, uh, I'm going to play a sound uh, on the next slide so um, this, uh, you can listen to this explosion. Um, this is a canonical explosion. I don't remember where I, I downloaded it from, but if you if you talk about an explosion underwater, this is what it's it's supposed to sound like. There are three um, sub explosions you might call them, where as the uh, explosion bubble expands and then collapses in on itself and repeats. And um, this is like the signature telltale sign of an underwater underwater explosion. And you can also note that um, th this recording is quite clean. There's no noise there. So I'll show you the sound of um, what um, what we picked up. I hope you heard the triple explosion there. Okay, uh, so we also pick up this triple explosion, which is the uh, indicates that uh, an underwater blast has has occurred. Um, but you will also notice that there's a lot of crackling sounds, and these are the crystal shrimp that live in um, shallow tropical waters, and um, where underwater acoustics is concerned. Um, they are considered a, a big problem. Um, you also, if you if you might have been able to pick up some wave noise because the boy was um, is floating on the surface, so you pick up a lot of surface noise as well. So waves um, slapping about, and so that's. Um, I'll show you another uh, sound clip. Okay, not all of the explosions um, that we picked up were of the triple uh, triple explosion type. Um, in fact, most of them are just a single explosion. And I think what's going on is that um, the explosions are taking place very close to the surface of the water. So they breach the water surface, um, and this means that um, the uh, there is an ex there isn't an explosion bubble to um, collapse in on itself. So you just get one explosion with a long with a long decay. Nonetheless, you can still pick that up, and um, you can still hear the uh, 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 snapping shrimp crackles and pops. But nonetheless, I think the, the, the blast sound is very distinct, so I would consider this to be a success. I'm going to skip over the next slide because it's mostly the same thing. And we talk a little bit about the electronics. Um, Basically, it's a, an acoustic recorder put inside a uh, waterproof housing. And this re uh, acoustic recorder comes from a previous project of mine, which was to which was a passive acoustic recorder used by uh, wildlife conservationists. Basically, you put it in the forest or jungle or wherever it is, and you pick up the sounds of animals based on a uh, program schedule. So you might run it every morning to pick up the birds morning chorus and at every evening you pick up the, the uh, evening chorus um, it's now we're putting that all that equipment into a waterproof container putting it in the water with the hydrophone so this is the uh, basis of the electronics and we can talk a bit about the hydrophone because that's kind of an interesting story hydrophone is uh, based is based on a 40 kilohertz uh, uh, ultrasonic transducer this is the same sort that is that you use in Arduinos um, when you use the uh, sonar sonar ranging unit, except this is a, a weatherproof unit. Turns out it's also relatively waterproof, so it can be used. Um, but the trick is you really should use it with a preamp behind it because otherwise the um, you get a lot of noise. 
and um, there's not enough gain at, when you run it at, uh, at uh, normal audio frequencies. So on the lower right here, you can see the uh, transducer. Um, it's in a, it's in a rigid enclosure, which is a PVC pipe, which I found to be it's a good um, it's a good system. It's watertight. On the left, you can see the original uh, uh, hydrophones that we used for the trial. Um, the preamp and the transducer are just wrapped up in a, uh, a heat shrink tubing. That also works, but it looks a bit um, it looks a bit like it's not going to survive for very long. But, uh, so I'm I'm inclined to using the uh, rigid enclosure. Okay, that's about it for the hardware. Uh, you might want you might wonder what it is we intend to do with this. Um, you heard Andrew Thaler talk about um, uh, parachute science earlier. That is uh, that is a real thing, and it's one of the things that I'm very concerned about. So most of these monitoring um, projects, they just fizzle out and die because um, after the money uh, dries up and the foreign expertise goes home, um, there's just nothing left. So what we're trying to do is um, we'll, we'll fund everything locally just to get things started. Sorry, we'll fund everything personally, or maybe we'll crowdfund it just to get things started. Um, but we'll make an effort to get the locals to make um, make the boys, for instance, while we provide the training and the, and the electronics. And we, I think we can do that for, for about US $50 per unit. And we'll use the fishermen to deploy the uh, boys and recover the boys and upload the recordings. So again, these are the local, uh, we're using local, local uh, the community to, we're involved in the local community. And then the last part is um, we need to have a, a data processing um, scheme offline to, re to pick up these uh, uh, recordings and process them to figure out where the, uh, um, where the blasts are located. And uh, so what this means is that the um, reports that we generate are not going to be real time, at least for this minimum viable um, project stage. Instead, we'll, we can hope to produce a report every week or every day, perhaps. Uh, and after this has been, this scheme has been shown to work and demonstrated, we'll just hand it, we'll just give it over to the local government, the city or the town. And I'm very, I'm cynical enough to think that um, if you give a politician an opportunity for free publicity and to look good, um, they'll probably be interested. So that's kind of the plan. But there's still more stuff to do. Like um, the boy that I showed you, it leaks a bit when it gets hit, when it gets struck by uh, another boat. So that's not so good. And the data processing, the offline data processing that I talked about, um, that's not been done yet. So that still needs to be done. And um, so, okay, so that's it for my presentation. Um, the rest of this story, it could take a number of different ways, but I'm gonna leave that for the question section because if you want me to talk about the hardware, I can go on forever. If you want me, want me to talk more about this uh, half-baked um, uh, uh, business plan, I can do that too. But um, that's it um, for me and uh, over to you.